All right, welcome you guys. Let's go ahead and go through 1.4, which is a very important section, especially if you're someone who plans to continue on into calculus. Writing the equation of a line and slope and all of these concepts are the basis for calculus one. Okay, so if that's your intentions, make sure that you just really master this stuff. All right, so it says writing the equation of a line using slope intercept form. So we already learned slope intercept form, but let me just kind of remind you of what that is, okay? So slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Now I recommend that you memorize not just the formula, but the name. And the best way to memorize the name is by thinking about why they called it that, okay? So slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, right? And the reason why they called it slope intercept is because m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So these names are not creative. They're more like logical names. So most of the time they make sense, okay? And the reason why it's important for you to memorize the name is because there's so many different formulas that sound the same. We have slope intercept, point slope, and slope. And I know my students tend to get those mixed up because they all have the word slope in them. So just make sure that you go in and you kind of think, okay, well, why did they call it this? Oh, this is the one where it's evident, clearly evident what the slope and what the y-intercept are, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and substitute in the things that they gave us. So we know that the slope is negative seven ninths. So that's the M, okay? And then if the y-intercept is zero 16, then that means that they're telling us that the B is gonna be 16. So we just simply need to plug them in. It's that easy on this first problem. There you go. So the one that's attached to the X is the slope. And the one that does not have the variable X is gonna be where you cross the Y axis at, it's the Y intercept. All right, a line has slope negative two thirds and contains the point negative three six. Use slope intercept form to write the equation of the line. So again, we need to use slope intercept, so we better know what that is. And so we just said that's y equals mx plus b. Now in the future, we might not use slope intercept. I think most calculus teachers use point slope uh, more frequently, but you know, it's your pick for what you think is the easiest, okay? All right, so we've got that um, the slope is negative two thirds. So that means that the M is gonna be negative two thirds. And this one's a little different. They don't give us the B, they don't give us the Y intercept. They just give us some other random point. So when that happens, you're gonna substitute that point in for your X and your Y. All right, I'm just gonna let you know now, we're gonna use this equation twice. The first time around, we're gonna substitute in Y, M, and x. And then the last time around, we're going to substitute in the m and the b. Okay. So I'm just going to highlight, we're going to substitute these in on the second round. And we're going to substitute all of these in on the first round. All right. So here we go. Y is six up in the directions. M is negative two thirds. And x is negative three. So we're going to use this to find b. All right, so I'm gonna cross cancel the three with the three, but don't forget about this negative sign right here, right? Okay, so we have two negatives. So when multiplying, two negatives makes a positive. So this is gonna be a positive two that's left. All right, so just to recap, the three's canceled, but a negative times a negative is gonna make this two that's left over a positive two. All right, and then to get rid of the two, we'll subtract it away. So we have four equals B. So now we're gonna go ahead and go over here and use the formula one more time, but this time we're only gonna substitute in the slope that they gave us and the B that we just you know worked hard to get. Bam, there's our slope intercept form. All right, now we could always check this. It's nice to just get a visual so you're not like the algebra robot. You know, it's like, okay, what am I doing? What did I find here? Okay, so let's go ahead and um, pull up GeoGebra. Go ahead and delete out this old one. And uh, let me, trying to make the axes look the same. So let me shrink this Y axis so it's a square grid instead of rectangles. 
Oh, it's not even labeled. Probably would help to label that. Give me a second, you guys. Settings. Let me make sure that the Y axis is, there we go, is showing. Holy moly. I think it's just best if I refresh this. There we go. Okay. All right. So if we look back at our problem, we know we want to go through negative three, six. So let me type in negative three, six on here. Oops. Try that again. Negative three comma six. Okay. So there's the point that we're hoping that this line passes through. Now I'm going to type in what we got as an answer. So we got negative two thirds X plus four. Let me go put that in. There we go. Okay, so it does go through the point negative three, six. And remember the slope is negative two thirds. And so that's the reason why um, this line slants towards the left because we would rise one, two, but then the negative sign with the three means we'd go to the left three spaces. So a positive two means up two, and then a negative three means left three. So yeah, this does exactly what we want. It has the slope we want and it goes through the point one. Awesome. All right, writing the equation of a line using point slope. So this is the point slope formula. So the first time we've talked about it in this class. Now I do kind of want to point out, um, just as this, don't worry if this, you know, isn't something that you remember, but for people who are like really into, you know, math and stuff, I do want to point out that if you look at the slope formula, which is um, M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, if we multiply both sides by the x2 minus x1, so we can cancel it out, we even do it here, multiply by the x2 minus x1, then what we have is this. Which if I flip it around is essentially this formula. I mean, we didn't subscript, looks like we don't have a second point. So that's why they didn't subscript um, the X twos, right. And the Y twos. So if you take away this and you take away this, then you end up with this formula. So let's say you're on a test and you're like, Oh my gosh, I forgot this one. Well, then that's how you can come up with it. Um, by using the slope formula, assuming that you remember that, right. Now this is called point slope. And I told you they're logical with how they name things. And that's because you're going to use this formula when you're given a point and the slope. What you plug into it is a point, x1, y1. So you're going to plug in here and here. And you're also going to substitute in the slope. That's why we call it point slope. All right. So this is a very common formula. I tend to use it a lot when I teach calculus. All right. Use the point slope formula to write an equation of the line having the given conditions. Write the answer in slope intercept form if possible. So this is what I'm talking about. You can't just memorize the formulas. You got to know their name because just in one problem, we're using point slope and slope intercept. So you've really got to have those names straight, right? Um, slope intercept is the y equals mx plus b. Point slope's the y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1, the one we just looked at. All right, so let's go ahead and write the formula down. Okay, so I'm going to label it just for good measure here. So this is us writing down point slope form, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and write down y minus y1. Remember I told you guys when you're doing your homework, don't have the formula in front of yourself. You know, maybe the first couple, write it down every problem and then try to make your brain struggle and come up with it, you know, without looking. You don't wanna make things too easy on yourself, okay? All right, so. This is gonna be my X1, my Y1, and of course we have our M. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. Y minus two equals two parentheses X. Now it's X minus negative four. We talked about if we have minus a negative, that it becomes a plus. Minus a negative becomes a plus. All right, now in the end, it says it wants the answer in slope intercept form. So we want y equals mx plus b in the end. So we got to keep going. So we're going to distribute that to in. And then we'll just add two to both sides.
Now we are in y equals mx plus b. So we are done here. Now I always like to check, make sure, you know, that it did what we wanted to. We're supposed to pass through negative 4, 2, you guys. Okay, let's go see if we did pass through negative 4, 2. All right, so let's get negative 4, 2 up here. Bam. And then let's go put in, what did we get? 2x plus 10? Oh, there you go. It went through the point. And it does have a slope of 2, right? Up 1, 2 over 1. So we're looking good. This matches what we were supposed to do. All right. Same directions. Okay. So we're going to start off by writing down point slope. And then we'll label. We got our x1 and our y1. So let's go substituting this stuff in. y minus 0 equals m parentheses x minus 5. So y minus 0, that's just going to be y. And if we distribute the negative 2 thirds in, a negative times a negative on the second one would be a positive. I'll just do the math off to the side. Negative 2 thirds times negative 5 over 1. That's going to get us a negative times a negative 10 over 3. So this is going to become 10 thirds. Okay. All right. So now we have this in y equals mx plus b. Okay. So as far as like, oh, I didn't graph this last one, did I? I did it on GeoGebra though, so I'm going to let it go. Let's graph this one by hand. Now, you might be thinking, what? Mecklenburg, 10 thirds as my y-intercept? Mm -mm, let's not graph it. But I want to show you guys that fractions aren't that bad, okay? All right, so the slope, the m, is negative 2 thirds, right? So we have to pick if we're going up or down, and we have to pick if we're going left or right. So since it's negative, that means we would be going down. And since it's positive, that means we would be going to the right. Okay. And then 10 thirds, our y-intercept of 10 thirds. Well, let's get that as a, a fraction. It's three and a third. Or if you're a decimal lever, it's 3.3 .3 forever. Okay. So I have to go to 3.3 .3 on the y-axis. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and then 0.3. So like maybe right there. Okay. Oops, sorry. I thought I was on my eraser. There we go. All right. Now from there, we just said we're going to go down to right 3, right? Down to right 3. So I'm going to go down 2. Now I want to make sure this is clear because I'm kind of in no man's land. Down one will put me in the same exact spot. It'll put me like right here, right? That's down one. Down two will put me in the same exact spot, down two, okay? Now, normally I wouldn't draw these dots, but I just wanted you guys to see where, where I'm hitting at, right? And then I'm going to go right three from there. So we'll go one. That was really ugly. Let me try that again. So we'll go one, two, Three and we'll end up, let me put it in green to match the other one. We'll end up right there, you guys. All right. And now what's the point we're supposed to go through? Five, zero, you guys. So that's right here. And that looks like that's on the same line. If I uh if I draw a line through these two points, what do you know? Let me make sure it's straight and it does go through all of them. Bam. It also went through five zero. I know you were thinking there's no way it was going to because it was a fraction, but look at that. So basically, if you're in no man's land, when you're counting your slope, that's fine. Just go to the same exact spot in no man's land, right? You'll never be on a corner. You'll always be kind of in this weird spot, okay? All right, moving right along. Use the point slope. So same directions for all of these, huh? Now, this is a problem because they didn't give me the same stuff they've been giving me on the last few. They did give me a point, but they did not give me the slope, right? Okay, so we're going to have to find the slope. So I'm going to type that out. This is just kind of me brainstorming. We need the slope is my first thought.
So let's use the slope formula. Lots of formulas in this section, huh? We gotta keep straight. All right, so test yourself. See if you remember what the slope formula is. There's my hint. That's a big hint. Hopefully that was enough for you to get y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're gonna go in and label these the same way we did for distance and midpoint, right? And we're just gonna go substitute them in. All right, so y2 is a one minus a negative plus x2 minus a negative again, so plus. So that looks like that's going to be 5 over negative 1 or negative 5. All right, cool. We got our slope. So now we can go ahead and use point slope, right? y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. I'm just going to put a little dividing line here, OK? All right, so by the way, it doesn't really matter if you use x1, y1, or if you use x2, y2. You could do either one. So like, let's say, say this was really ugly, like it was fractions or decimals, and this one was whole numbers. Well, then I would go with the x2, y2. And maybe just this once will show you so you can kind of see, hey, it doesn't matter who I use. So the first time around, y minus y1, so y minus negative 4, that's going to be plus. And we just found the m. And then x minus negative 1, so plus. All right. Then we're going to do it a, oops, a second time. Let me get a straighter line than what I wrote. But we'll do it with the other point, just to prove a point, OK? That we got what, y minus 1. This is me using x2, y2, you guys. And then x minus negative 2. So how about plus 2? Now look at this. They look totally different. You're like, oh, there's no way these are going to give me the same answer. But watch. They will. And then we'll subtract four and we'll subtract four. All right, so that was us using x1, y1. Maybe right here I'll make sure I put it for our notes. This is us using x1, y1. This is going to be us using x2, y2. All right, so let's see what happens here. We're going to distribute the negative five. Y minus one equals negative five X minus 10. Then we'll add one, add one. Y equals negative five X. What do you know? Same exact answer, right? All right, now let's check the answer. So negative nine is the Y intercept, right? Zero, negative nine. Of course, I did not make one with negative nine on it. So six, seven, eight, nine. We'll call this negative nine right here. All right, that's where our first dot is going to go. And then our slope is negative five and always make it a fraction. So negative five over one. So we have to figure out if we're going up or down, left or right. Since it's negative five, we'll go down. And since it's positive one, we'll go right. Now, the only problem is down five. Look at our graph, guys. Down five, right one. I'm going to be like way off the graph. So instead of going down and to the right, we said we can always do the exact opposite and go up and to the left. So I'm actually going to go up five, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and then left one. I'm going to do it again. One, two, three, four, five, left one. Okay. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and get my line function here and try to uh, draw the line through it. I'm so bad at this, making it go through it the first time. Let's have to move it. All right, so there's our line, you guys. Now let's see if it did, if it's the right line. Let's check ourselves. We're supposed to pass through negative one, negative four. Aha, look at this. This guy right here is negative one negative four. So did it there. And we're also supposed to pass through negative two, one, negative two, one.
perfect. So if you finish your test early on a question like this, you can always graph it to be like 100% positive, or you can always plug the points in too. It's your call. All right, should satisfy the equation if you plug the points in. All right, use the point slope formula to write an equation, so same directions. Ooh, but they definitely change things on us. Hmm. All right, so we're definitely not using the formula, right? That's my first comment. Okay, we are definitely not using the formula. Let's make sure that that's clear though by me just doing some boneheaded stuff here that you're gonna see in a second. Okay, we can't use the formula. All right, so let's just make sure that that's super clear to everybody, right? I mean, our formula is y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. And while we have our x1, y1, our slope is undefined. So this would be like y minus three equals, and you'd have to put the word undefined in here, right? And then x minus two, and this makes no sense, right? No sense. So this is one we're actually gonna do by graphing, okay? So we will get the equation by graphing. So I'm just going to go right to the graph. So let's go ahead and graph the point two, three. All right, so two is right here, you guys. And three is right here, so here's two, three. Now, you have to think to yourself, what kind of line has undefined slope? So that's the question I want to pose to you and see if you know that, right? You can remember that. What kind of line has undefined slope? Well, remember we talked about that treadmill? Like you go to the gym and when the treadmill's flat and the treadmill's like this, its incline is zero. So this is zero. If it's straight up and down, that's going to be when M is undefined. Okay. So the answer to this question would be a vertical line. Okay. So we need a vertical line that passes through two, three. So we're looking at this kind of a line right here. Now you have to remember whether or not that's an X equals or a Y equals. And a lot of people wanna say Y equals cause they're like, oh, here's the Y axis. It's in the same direction as the Y axis, but it is not a Y equals. This is actually X equals two, okay? It's opposite the axes. And it's really easy cause think about it. If you write down all the points on the line, two comma one, two comma two, two comma three, you start noticing that X always is two. So that's why we call it the X equals two line everywhere on it, X equals two, but Y varies. All right, so some of this is obvious and some of it's not so obvious. Parallel lines have the same slope. That to me is kind of obvious. If I draw a line and I draw his buddy, right? like somebody who does not intersect with them, then he has to be, he has to have the same slope. If I change the slope at all, then what's gonna happen is these lines will eventually run into each other if we kept going, right? Da, 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 you know, maybe like right here, let's say, okay? So you can't have different slopes. They have to slope the same in order for them to, oops, to not run into each other. So this to me, is kind of obvious the fact that the parallel lines have the same slope. That's not rocket science here. Okay, so let me be precise and draw markings on here that show they go on forever. So they're lines now, and that's the parallel symbol. All right. Now, what's not so obvious is that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. So we'll investigate that a little bit, okay? First of all, a lot of my students don't know what perpendicular means. So let me just make sure that's clear. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal, reciprocal slopes. And so let's make sure you know what perpendicular lines are. So perpendicular lines aren't just lines that cross each other. That's usually what students say to me when I ask. I say lines that cross. No, they have to cross in a very specific way. 
they have to cross and make 90 degrees, you guys. So that's my best attempt at a 90. It has to be a right angle at the crossing. So it can't just be lines like this, right? This looks acute while this looks obtuse. You know, it's got to cross in a way to where it makes that nice right angle, that nice 90 degree angle. Okay, now the fact that they have to be opposites, that makes complete sense to me because remember we said something with positive slope slants towards the right. So this would be the one with the positive slope and then something with a negative slope slants towards the left. That makes sense to me. There's no way I can make a 90 degree angle if I have a line that slants towards the right. There's no way I could also slant towards the right. I just wouldn't be able to make that 90. I'd have to have one that slants, you know, to make a right angle to the left. This would be one slanting towards the right. This would be one slanting towards the left. So that makes sense to me, the part where it says the signs have to be opposite. But what doesn't make so much sense, you really have to dive deep, is why they have to be reciprocals. Let's just go check out GeoGebra to kind of help us see this, you guys. Okay. So I'm going to make a line with slope 2. I'm going to put y equals 2x. And I'm only going to change the sign, y equals negative 2x. And I'm going to see that I do not have a 90. This angle right here is small, and this angle is big. In other words, this one's acute, and this one's obtuse. I don't see a 90-degree angle there at all, OK? And that's because both lines, let me see if I can get what I need to here. Both lines had the same slope, right? This one's up two over one, and this one's up two over one. And so that wasn't enough to create the 90. So it turns out that if I don't just change the sign, but I also uh, make the reciprocal. So reciprocal means to flip it, right? So this is two over one. When I flip it, it becomes one over two. Now I'm gonna hit enter and we should see that now we have that nice right angle right there, that perfect perpendicular, uh, you know, T if you will, or nice T, okay? So it's not enough to just change the sign. Yeah, that'll get them slanting different ways, but to get that 90 degree angle, I gotta have the opposite reciprocal. All right, so let's go back to, to this. Now, once you know that, these are the easiest problems. It's like, give me a ton of these on my next test, please, okay? So it says the slope of a line is given. Determine the slope of a line parallel and perpendicular to the given line if possible. Okay. So remember we said parallel lines have the same slope. So negative three eighths. Perpendicular lines, you have to flip it and change the sign. So it's uh, negative three eighths. So flip it, it's going to be eight thirds and it's going to be positive now because I changed the sign. Part B, parallel lines have the same slope. So 20, 20. Now remember, it's really 20 over one. So when I flip it, it's gonna be one over 20. And then I have to change the sign. It was a positive, now it's a negative. Parallel lines have the same slope, so zero, zero. Now that's really zero over one. So if I flip it, it would be one over zero, technically negative, but anything with zero in the bottom is undefined. Do not put one over zero into my math lab. You would be wrong on that, okay? Another way to think about that one, that particular one, part C, is if the slope is zero, that means that it's a line like so. Remember our treadmill, okay? So this is gonna be M equals zero. If I'm trying to make 90 degrees with that, then the line has to be straight up and down. That's how I'm gonna get my nice 90, right? And we just got done saying, well, vertical lines have undefined slopes. Okay. All right. A tricky one there on that part C. Example five, give the equation of a line that passes through negative one, two, and is parallel to the line defined by y minus three x equals four. Okay. So pretty much any time that they're asking you to write the equation of the line, give the equation of the line, right? You're using point slope. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. And I say pretty much because you could use slope intercept. It's just not one that most teachers I think use as often, sometimes. All right, so any time you have to write the equation of a line for my class, use point slope. All right, okay, so point slope, 
And it makes sense because guess what we're going to have? We're going to have a point and the slope. So that's why they named it such, right? All right, so y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. Now, if I plug in what I know currently, all I know is the x1 and the y1. That's all I've got. Oops, sorry, you guys. So if I go to plug that in, it's going to be y minus 2 equals m parentheses x minus negative 1. Minus negative 1, so plus 1. But I'm missing the m, right? I'm just going to make a little comment here. m is missing. Okay. All right, so we have to think about how we can find m. I want you to just kind of ponder that for a second. How can we find M? How can we find M? Okay. All right, so maybe hopefully you were looking at like this other part of the uh, directions that we haven't used yet. You're like, well, they're not gonna give me that for no reason, right? Yeah, so we're supposed to be parallel to that line. So we're just going to find this line slope. And because it's parallel, the slope should be the same. OK, so how can we find M? We need to find the slope of the given line. Since they are parallel, the slope will be the same. So the next question is, well, how the heck do we find the slope of y minus 3x equals 4? Okay. Well, anytime that you, and it's not letting me click inside of there, and I don't want to do a new types box. Let me click over here, see if that changes it. OK, there we go. All right, so, so let's get y by itself so that the line, the given line, is in slope intercept form. Now, why that? If it's in slope intercept form, if it's in y equals mx plus b, well, the m is the slope. So we'll be able to see it very easily. All right, so here we are. We got y minus 3x equals 4. So we're just going to move this 3x over so it'll be positive because we crossed the equal sign. We added it over. And now we can see that the slope is 3. So that means we're going to use m equals 3. Now, I want you to think not, know, not think every time we use the same. No, it's only because of the word parallel that we use the same. I change this parallel to a perpendicular, then I'm not going to be using 3 here. I'm going to flip it and change the sign, right? So it's not like we always steal the slope from this. It's only because these were parallel lines. All right, so now that we've got this, bam, we can go plug it in over here. Y minus 2 equals 3 parentheses x plus 1. And it's just customary, you guys, to get it into slope intercept. So I'm going to keep going here. Didn't state it in the directions, but it's kind of customary. We'll add the 2 to get rid of the minus 2. There it is. We just got the equation of our line here. All right, now let's get a picture. This picture is going to say so much. It's going to make what we're doing really clear. OK, so we have the point. Let me just shrink this guy so we can have both on the screen. All right, we have the point negative 1, 2, right? That's what we're supposed to pass through. And we are supposed to be parallel to y minus 3x equals 4. All right, let's see how well we did, you guys. OK, so there's, there's what we're getting. We're supposed to go through a, but be parallel. So something like this is what my guess is. Now let's put in our line. We got y equals 3x plus 5. Perfection. Look at that, you guys. That's spectacular. All right, cool. 
Let me make this bigger. All right, now, of course, we did a parallel one. We got to do a perpendicular one. So pretty much the same, same directions, but just changing the parallel to perpendicular. So we got our y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. Here's our x1, y1. So we're going to substitute that in. y minus 8 equals m parentheses x minus 6. We're missing the m. So we take a little detour over here. And we look at the given line. So we got 2y plus 5x equals 10. We need to get the y by itself. All right. So if we get the y by itself, let's see how we would do that. Well, we'd have to move the x over. Typical. So we'll move the x over, making it negative. And then we got to divide that two away since it's multiplying. Opposite of multiplying is dividing. Now I'm going to go all the way just because, you know, I like to have your notes fully done and stuff, but you don't have to find anything except for the slope. So if it's a test and your time, I wouldn't go about like doing this and figuring it out. It's not necessary. Really, we just need the slope here. So the slope is negative five halves. So let's just kind of make, you know what? Actually, I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to type this out. So the slope of the given line, right? So I'm going to title this slope. Oops. Slope of given line. Slope of perpendicular line. So used to spell check you guys that when I don't have it, like correcting all my bad typing revealed here for sure. All right, slope of perpendicular line. All right, so let's go in and make sure we know. So the slope of the given line is negative five halves. All right, so we want the slope of a perpendicular line. So remember, we got to flip that guy. So instead of five over two, two over five, and we also have to change the sign. So it'll stay positive two fifths. So that is what we are going to substitute in right there. All right, let's continue this then. So it's really y minus eight equals two fifths x minus six. We'll distribute the two fifths y minus 8 equals 2 fifths x minus, so off to the side, I got to do 2 over 5 times 6 over 1. So if I multiply straight across, 2 times 6 is 12, 5 times 1 is 5, so this is going to be 12 fifths. Then we're going to go ahead and add 8 to both sides. Again, if you're in my class, you're allowed the Casio, you're allowed a calculator, but we've been kind of saying the Casio 300 is really the best one to get. So then we got to do, you would just do this in your calculator. You wouldn't be doing any of this stuff by hand. Okay, so let's see. Negative 12 over 5 plus 8 over 1. So we have to get common denominators. So I have to multiply this by a 5, top and bottom. Whatever you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top. So this is going to be negative 12 over 5 plus 40 over 5, which will get you 28 fifths. It's ugly, but I'm pretty sure it's right. Let's go check. It's going to be a nice picture. Okay, so let me go ahead and move this over. Oops, I need it to be that low. There we go. All right, I'm going to delete out our old lines from our last one. Okay, let's put in. We want to pass through the point 6, 8, right? And the line that we want to be perpendicular to, typing in now, is this one. 
And I should probably make it to where we can see six, eight, huh? Let me zoom out a little bit. Oops, that was in, wrong way. All right, and then I'm gonna type in the line that we got, which is really ugly. So let's see if uh, we did it right. It was pretty nasty. Okay, so plus 28 divided by five. Oh my goodness, I think it looks good. That looks like a right angle. That looks like a nice, nice line, uh, a nice 90. And it also goes through the point 68. So this is really good. All right, you guys, a big section, an important section. Um, practice this stuff really hard if you're, you know, wanting to continue on, if you're in business, if you're in engineering, if you're in computer programming, all these courses that make you have to take calculus one, because a deep understanding of this is going to make um, tangent lines and stuff like that a lot simpler in calc one. All right, you guys, take care.